existing house is in about now. Primary house. Is there going to be an easement left or a deeded farm to the uh, east next to the railroad? And is there a another camp that's going to be on the west side? Uh, Where, where's how did you know there's, there's, a, there's a 60 there's a 60 yeah, foot that, that'll be the easement to access the house yeah. the uh, owner will retain the rest of the property around there I don't know that there's a plan for them that we're talking about Anybody else here wishing to speak in favor of this request, please come forward at this time. No one else wishing to speak in favor. If there's anyone here wishing to speak in opposition of this request, please come forward at this time.
part of Stone Creek as well as um, Park and Ridge subdivision. That's very, that's very concerning. And then adding another subdivision to that road, that's a major issue. I mean, that, that is a county problem that needs to be addressed. And what I'm hearing is, uh, I have not been here this long, but what I'm hearing is this has been an issue. It's been going on. Um, there ought to be perhaps some incentives provided to these developers to help in alleviating some of that infrastructure. But in any case, we are not going to be able to resolve the problem of the road situation and the traffic created. And the fact that this one outlet road is actually, it gets, um, blocked by a railroad, by the train. Um, the other challenge, which is in the hands of the developer, to me, is the density that we are proposing on the site. Um, people want to live in that area because somebody before you, before you Stone Creek, created a beautiful environment. They have larger lots. There is something attractive about that. that people are, that's appealing to folks that want to live in that area. Um, Carlton Ridge, I don't know how, I hope I don't offend anybody by uh, saying what I'm about to say, but something went wrong there by allowing the subdivision to happen with, with these smaller lots with minimal landscaping. It's, it's, uh, for me, visiting that area, it was startling the, how opposing Stone Creek is to that neighborhood directly across the street from it. So to me, I would like to see, if this is not just a, this should not be a rezoning of one entire parcel. It ought to be developed so the properties that are adjacent to Stone Creek and across from Tillman Crossing need to be compatible with that subdivision across the street and, and be, maintain that same small size. And then as you go deeper, you can go higher density. But you, you ought to be respectful of the edge conditions that you share with the, with the neighbors. Um, so I share your, your concerns with all the issues with traffic and the condition of Tillman Crossing, but we also need to address the zoning um, or the rezoning request, which is not, to me, is not appropriate yet for this parcel. I just wanted to share that as my opinion. Mr. any other discussion? As I mentioned, y'all last Monday night, I'm also the president of the Homeowner Association. And in that position, I, I don't think it creates a conflict. And I've asked all of you the same thing. Um, but I have received an untold number of phone calls from folks in there with the same concerns. You know, and all of these folks know it better than I because I go out to other entrances on the street. But as you've heard tonight, about half of our neighborhood. One thing I want to draw a distinction on, we all, something Mike said earlier, and, and that is, you know, he, he said we, we shouldn't put the burden of this on, the, or the county can't put the burden of this on the developer. Well, that comment assumes approval of the, uh, that we're going to approve the, the development. But the burden should be shared by all the properties around there. And that, that outlines the exact issue here. And I know it's by a large part a money issue over the years, the county and the state have not done anything to address the issues on Highway 41. That shouldn't be the burden of this developer. It shouldn't be the burden, the burden of this property owner. But that's the burden we all have to deal with. And I want to point out to you, too, laying in front of you, you know, standards for exercise of zoning powers, the first words there are in order to promote public health, safety, morality, and general welfare before you get any factors related to what we're doing. So our first decision has to always be to promote those factors. And here, there is absolute clear and convincing evidence that we're not promoting public safety by adding to an already horrible problem. <coughs> now, if this development wants to go forward, then the developer and the property owner need to be on the county with both feet and the state with both feet to get something done. And I know I'm putting that on our county commission, and I appreciate their service, but that's why they're getting paid to make the hard decisions. <laughs> They don't get paid a lot, but they get paid more than us. So I, I, I would ask that y'all consider denying this request. Or not. I don't think it's a good idea to be factory. 
Safety is a major issue. Uh, and number nine, whether the proposed change is out of scale uh, for the neighborhood, I think it is. Therefore, I make a motion that we recommend denial for this request. We have a motion for denial by Commissioner Willis. Seven two. That concludes, if you will, all our agenda items for this evening.